Hi, I'm Mitchell McEwen, and thanks for watching my talk on our KaiPlay paper, Intuitive Interaction with Motion Controls in a Tennis Video Game. To get started, I'll just introduce a couple of concepts from the literature that are important to the work. First, naturally mapped control interfaces, or NMCIs, employ physical and cultural analogies to increase correspondence between the player's physical control actions and their in-game virtual effects. Next, intuitive interaction occurs when people draw on their subconscious pool of relevant amalgamated experiences, or their relevant familiarity, for quick and effective interaction with products and interfaces. More naturally mapped control interfaces for video games are broadly claimed across industry and academia to facilitate greater intuitive interaction, though how or why they achieve this, and how different types of controllers influence intuitive use for different types of players has been less clear. So for this work our research questions were, how does the use of different NMCI types affect intuitive interaction with video games, and how do these effects vary according to player characteristics? Virtua Tennis 4 was the stimulus material for our study, which was released by Sega in 2011. There are four basic control actions for the motion control mode of the game that was tested. Moving the racket and hitting the ball are the primary control actions, and the player can also serve the ball and move towards and away from the net on the court. 120 participants played the game for 6 minutes with each motion control interface. All the game settings were controlled so that the only thing that changed was the control interface type, which were classified from least to most naturally mapped using Skalski and colleagues' typology. The Connect is a kinesic NMCI since movement of your arm is generally captured and mapped to the racket in the game, yet you don't have a tangible object to grasp. The Move is incomplete tangible because you hold it in your hand and manipulate it like a tennis racket, but it doesn't look or feel like the equivalent real-life tool. And then for the realistic tangible NMCI type, the Move was placed in a plastic and foam racket shell, meaning there were only aesthetic and form differences for the two most naturally mapped control interfaces, and no difference in how they actually captured the player's physical control actions. This was the configuration of the test environment in our lab, which was set up like a lounge room to increase ecological validity. Participants were given a brief scripted overview of the controls prior to play, as well as the goal to have fun and perform as well as they could in the match. So after pre-screening, participants answered a questionnaire to sample player characteristics such as age, gender, and control interface familiarity. Intuitive use was captured while playing the game, and followed by a player experience survey that sampled perceived intuitive controls, and then this process was repeated for the remaining control interface conditions. Technology familiarity has been shown across a range of domains to be an important predictor for intuitive use. We first adapted Blackler's technology familiarity measure in our earlier work, where game technology familiarity, or GTF, was used to sample exposure to the actual control interfaces tested, as well as similar interfaces and activities. This was designed to factor in the participant's length of use for the relevant product or interface, as well as how recently and frequently they were exposed to it. In this study, the GTF measure was revised to also factor in the average duration of use, and we also switched to sampling in whichever continuous variable was easiest for the participant to recall. And here are the results for that measure. So participants' control interface familiarity was significantly lower with Connect compared to the other NMCIs, and more familiarity was also shown for the move over the racket shell move. A between subjects factor effect was also revealed that showed that the youngest group had more control interface familiarity across the NMCIs than the oldest group. Our objective measure of intuitive use, successful hit percentage, was coded post-play using captured gameplay footage and reflects both correct intuitive uses and errors, which are common measures in intuitive interaction research. Results show that intuitive uses were significantly higher with the more naturally mapped control interfaces, with the racket shell move higher than the move, which in turn was higher than connect. Thus, the objective measure of intuitive use broadly followed participants' control interface familiarity, except the racket shell move was found to be more intuitive than the move, despite lower familiarity and the fact that the only difference between these interfaces was the addition of a plastic and foam shell. Between subject factor results further supported control interface familiarity as a predictor of intuitive use, with the youngest and high control interface familiarity groups finding the NMCIs more intuitive than the oldest group and low control interface familiarity groups. Our perceived measure of intuitive use was sampled using intuitive controls from the player experience of need satisfaction or PENS instrument. The results showed that the racket shell move was perceived as more intuitive than connect, but only the higher control interface familiarity groups reported move as more intuitive than connect, while only the low control interface familiarity group reported the racket shell move as more intuitive than the move. This highlights three major findings for our work. 
First, it shows a strong connection between relevant familiarity and intuitive use for video games, extending intuitive interaction research. However, where there are differences between the sampled familiarity and intuitive use outcomes, they point to the compensatory effects that can be provided by NMCIs with higher levels of natural mapping. Finally, perceptions of intuitive interaction appeared to be shaped by player characteristics according to the dimensions of the NMCIs. Only those with higher levels of familiarity saw the abstract, tangible representation of the move as more intuitive than connect, and perceived no added benefit in the addition of a plastic shell. But for those with the least control interface familiarity, that greater physical realism and completion of their mental model was required before the tangible device was perceived as more intuitive than Connect. There are some limitations with the work, such as the controlled laboratory setting and participant demographics. Please look to our paper for more details. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you and further discussions at the conference very soon.